COVID patients who come to ICU and go on ventilator, they are going to be on ventilator with a very different lung. You have seen the pressure volume do, the graph going up. You have been used to seeing the graph vertically going up and coming down. This is the normal one you see. But here in ARD, the lung compliance is very bad. Lung compliance is very bad. So the graph goes absolutely nearly horizontally for a long time, then with high pressure it will increase to some volume. After that it will again become flat, it cannot go higher because the lungs are very stiff. Though we don't measure compliance as a measure of ARDS, but compliance tells us that ARDS has not gone. It tells us that the lung is bad. Okay, so compliance is important, but that does not, compliance is not the measure of ARDS, like PO to FIO ratio is a measure of ARDS. Okay, compliance is a marker, it alerts us, but it does not classify it as ARDS. Are we clear? Because you will find I will be talking about compliance so often, and you will think it is a marker of ARDS. Okay, so. ARDS can happen <coughs> due to some clinical condition, pneumonia. The one we are interested in now, basically viral infection affecting the lungs. Now, how does the damage occur in COVID-19? There are the ACE2 in the pneumocytes hmm? and the virus affects them. So these have a reaction. And that leads to the lung having very quick reaction and developing ARDS. Okay, so if this ACE2 is being acted upon, there's a cytokine storm, and this cytokine storm leads again to the development of ARDS. If there is something that can be used to prevent the cytokine storm, they will work. Hmm. Certain antiretrovirals some drug like some, in some instances they say some pathophysiology with hydroxychloroquine but how much where these are yet yet to be established but we know that pneumonia due to, we are talking here of viral etiology but yes bacterial pneumonia and uh, aspiration near drowning and then severe sepsis trauma blood transfusion Drug overdose, right? Okay, etc. Many things are there. Pancreatitis, they can cause ARDS. So, whether you are a surgeon, whether you are a physician, you will meet it in different points. And in those cases, the survival becomes more. Sorry. Hello. Yes. Tell me, I'm here in the, the seminar in the museum taking a lecture. So we have we have the different conditions are there. So you will be having patients with ARDS, okay? And we have the mortality any time in ARDS is high, and in COVID it is higher. Okay. So it may go up to 70%, 80%. Then you'll say, sir, what is the point of doing? But if you know that person or that person has a family, that person has a loved one, so what do we do? We abandon that person. So we give him the chance. Sir, yes. Okay. So you have got, basically what happens here is, 
you support the lung. There is a, in ERDS, you will have a period of uh, inflammation. Then there will be a period of uh, may, may decrease inflammation and recovery. So an anti-inflammatory agent works only in the period of inflammation. If you give an anti-inflammatory agent when the patient's inflammatory reaction is already going down, it would not be useful. So until you have markers which tell you that the infl inflammation is now upgoing, only at that point of time will an anti-inflammatory help. And if you use it at the wrong time, so you may have to use markers of inflammation, whether it is IL-6 and others. So, but basically it is supportive treatment. So, ventilation and fluid management. You have seen, I am talking everyday about fluid management. You will have a difficulty in your COVID ICU because all of you are not experienced intensivists. Okay. Even our experienced intensivists, very few in India actually can manage fluids appropriately because they don't have the measures that we have. Okay, so you can have uh, extravascular lung water. I have told you that the lung permeability increases so much that even slight increase in the blood pressure and the fluid tends to pour into the alveoli. <laughs> And you take it out in the whole white lung and you take out the fluid successfully without causing hypertension and the lung clears up. But then that doesn't mean you have cleared the lung that the patient will survive. Because the process of inflammation is ongoing. Process of recovery will also take time. And in this period, many times, each time you make a mistake with extra fluid load, etc., it will lead to the lung being damaged. So this is why it is a touch and go scenario. If you have a patient on ventilator, with the RDS and COVID, you will really have to work hard for that patient. Hmm? Achha. So, basically it is ventilator strategies, we will tell you, and fluid management. So, looking to the future, it has been seen that ARDS was under-recognized and his, you can imagine on the one hand it is under-recognized and its treatment is difficult touch and go and therefore morbidity mortality will be high. So prevention trials for critical illness they are challenging because we are using more and more of high flow nasal cannula but you don't have the luxury over there in COVID because it's very very difficult to actually take it on board that I will give high flow of oxygen 100 liters per minute, 90 liters per minute and it will not spread throughout the room, room with aerosol. So the general consensus currently is avoid high flow laser cannula. We all have our particular likes, favorites and I may be a champion high flow laser cannula. Oh I have this sophisticated equipment, I must use it and show my technical expertise and in the process spread COVID more. So we usually avoid hydronasal cannula, which is common sense. Okay, you can intubate the patient, but intubation itself is making it a bit pathological and therefore the morbidity mortality rate rises. <laughs> but we are using more and more of hydronasal cannula and redefining the condition based on subphenotypes well, the ARDS, whether it is due to this strain or that strain, you will find that some patients survive more in certain communities, some uh, survive less in certain communities. These are because of the pathogenicity of these subphenotypes. Okay, so we have got the definition. I told you the first day you came that less than 200. It is a rule of thumb. So you can have bilateral infiltrates but no atrial hypertension. Left atrial hypertension is not there. Left atrial hypertension means there is congestion, pulmonary congestion in the vasculature. That is not there and there, here you can find that here left atrial hypertension has already occurred because total blockage of the vessels of outpouring of fluid into the alveoli. You see, from the right heart it goes into the pulmonary circulation. So, as long as it is continuing to go this side, the damage is not so bad 
and so the PO to FiO2 ratio is usually much more than 200 and less than 300. So therefore, no left atrial hypertension. If it is so, then it would not come back into the left atrium. But when that becomes high, then more fluid goes there and you have got PO2 to FiO2 ARDS. Okay, so the green zone is your acute lung injury. Now, again, if I were going to give you a theoretical lecture, we will have Berlin definition and ACC definition. Don't worry so much about that. Basically, the central features are PAO to FIO to ratio less than 300. You, by now, you have already learned it. <laughs> because when the patient comes to you, you are alone. With your short training, you have to be able to make an objective diagnosis. So don't panic. Do a blood gas. CCFIO2. If 100% oxygen was given, FIO2 may be low because it may not need 100% oxygen, but you have given high amount of 100% because the patient has just come. Then on the pulse oxygen, reduce your FIO2. 100% if the saturation 100, you know that that is not the time you are calculating your PAO2 FIO2 ratio. Then you reduce the oxygen a bit. Every smart guy, every one of you is a smart guy, will start with 100% oxygen. You will keep going down until you see your saturation drops below 100. It comes to around 98, 96. Now do a blood gas and see how much oxygen is leading to a particular blood gas value that you get, PO2. That PO2 divided by the current FIO2 that you are giving will give you the PO2 FIO2 ratio. The patient just comes, you give 100 oxygen, percent oxygen, you get a PO2 and you say, oh sir, PO2 is very low. Why? Because my PO2 FIO2 ratio is very sir, because you are actually giving 100% when the patient may not be needing 100%. So after some time, look at the saturation. As you keep reducing FIO2, it comes to around 96. Then check your blood gas. Hmm. Then your PO2 to FIO2 ratio is less than 300 and bilateral radiographic opacities which is not primarily due to cardiac failure. If a person has got a cardiac failure, how can you say that this opacity is due to lung injury? Logical? So the history is important. We have a patient in the ICU, bed number 8, who came with a history of where regular he was having chest discomfort. He was drinking regularly and he was telling his family he is having chest discomfort, heaviness in the chest. But because he is drinking heavily and you will see his build is also very stout. So that day he felt very dis much more discomfort he is brought and he is thought to now in the COVID scenario he is brought as a suspected COVID but he has no history. So we treat him, we do the sampling but we treat him and we give him treatment for a developing MI. So enzymes, etc. everything given and he improved. So it is not a PO2 FIO2 ratio was low, but it is not due to ARDS. So if a cardiac disease is there and you can attribute that cardiac failure is the cause of this. Cardiac failure can develop finally, even in ARDS. If that um, uh, from the right heart coming to the left heart, if the left arterial hypertension is so high, nothing comes, then cardiac failure will develop. Right? So, cardiac failure not primarily due to heart failure. But if the lung condition is leading to heart failure, it will again be amenable to ARDS. Are we okay? Hmm? So, what has happened now? We have tried to take away the term acute lung injury. Mild ARDS, moderate ARDS, severe ARDS. Now, all these are there. But, you can imagine that it is only telling you it is more serious. Everything is 300, 200, 100. Isn't it? Not difficult. So, the lower the figure, worse the patient. And so, these patients must always, patients with ARDS, as I said, the alveoli are tending to collapse very easily and the fluid is coming in. They must always have pain. You cannot have a patient on ventilator with ARDS without pain. Okay, at the time of setting your ventilator, you will be setting it with pain. 
because this is COVID-19 lecture. <laughs> and always you must know your patients are with ARDS. You will not get patients without ARDS on ventilator with COVID. COVID positive lung, you will treat it as the RDS still proved otherwise. You will certainly find that the PO paper ratio is good, then you know it is not ARDS. Wonderful. Be careful, don't give excess fluids because the patient may be developing at that point of time. You said such at more than 300 and therefore everything is fine, give everything. No, watch it. So they must be on positive pressure and we may give five, more than five and the patients are coming, you will see that, oh, keep the patient on CPAP. Patients are coming, your colleagues will tell you, every day we are getting patients, patient is on CPAP. Go to admit to ICU. Why do we admit to ICU? Patient is on CPAP, let the patient be in the uh, red zone with CPAP. When you intubate, take it in, because now the problem with all CPAP, etc., is they are on mask. And on mask, these patients are, when they have come, they have not yet developed their ideas, but they can be infecting. <laughs> so, at the time of intubation, you have to be careful. So, acute onset within one week of known insult. <laughs> and we should do an echo if there is no known ARDS risk factor to rule out cardiac failure as an initiating cause of respiratory distress. As an initiating cause of respiratory distress. We understood? Now, but if you have already, the patient is a known contact, etc., you will suspect first the ideas and, and uh, rather than cardiac failure. But we have one patient from Cherapunji who had no known contact history. So patient comes, we suspect it is cardiac, we do enzymes, patient has a mind. So if there is no known reason to suspect the RDS, do an echo because it may be a cardiac cause. Simple. Hmm? Surgeon, physician, both understanding. Hmm? There is no misunderstanding. Okay. So we know that the volume overload is always your bugbear. Maybe not early, but a few days later. You see, so many of our patients have body fluid retention. So fluid overload can happen. So it is so important that every day you calculate your fluid. So you will do it today before you go. Because this is what is going to keep you safe. You have to calculate the fluid load. How much is going in, how much is coming out, you have to sit with your nurse, talk to them. You have seen, we are strict with our nurses, we are pleasant with everybody, but we have to get the job done. Hmm? You don't need to shout, and we understand that everybody will be under stress, question of blame, the JRD will be thinking, everybody will tell a bloody fool does not know anything. But the bloody fool knows more than the person who is telling he is a bloody fool. Okay, so be very clear in your mind, have the confidence, follow the logic. Follow the logic. There is nothing, I believe, that a, a senior resident coming from a non-critical care department and a GRD start up more or less on the same platform. You are wiser. You pick up earlier, that's all, isn't it? Huh? They will have to work harder to understand the same thing. Descent wise, you will understand in the first shot. <coughs> so, you will find that we are not talking about predictive uh, capacity of the other things. Why? Because I told you that even compliance is not the marker. PEEP is used for other things also. So, and uh, high minute ventilation will happen if the patient is tachypneic. Radiographic severity, they all white, but it may not be infection. It may be ERDS. It may be ERDS and not infection. Hmm? Either or. So these are not the predictive features. Are we clear? Anything? I am not going too fast. Sure. So, 
you have got lung injury prediction score is there now you know i have been telling you that coagulation factors thrombosis these are also factors which may in the covid 19 type of ards feature may be in, uh, related to the blood vessel having vasculitis etc so platelets have been shown to play an important role it may be role and uh, if the score of lung injury prediction score is more than four or four or more than four then we know that this is a difficult presence and you can see the lung injury prediction score we have predisposing conditions what are they you can see patient comes with shock aspiration sepsis pneumonia other high risk categories high risk surgery has the patient has undergone acute abdomen so if these all these you know pancreatitis etc they come so they all of these patient comes with the lung confusion so we had a very high profile patient uh, last year you remember the coal mining related hmm. very high profile patient so i had only one worry this confusion can lead to ards so if we can manage the patient perfectly at that period of time, manage the stress response in time, and it doesn't go on to develop ERDS, patient comes up quickly. If you miss the bus, it goes on to develop ERDS, now you treat the inflammatory time, the, end, the, the period of the inflammation is going down, fibrosis, uh, repair, all these things. So other risk modifiers, you have got alcohol. Just taking alcohol doesn't make you hyper. Alcohol abuse means alcohol abuse. Person takes huge amount of it. Hmm. And then patient is on chemotherapy, etc. And yeah, tachypnea is already there. SpO2 is very low. Acidosis is there. So these patients with a history of alcohol abuse with septic shock from pneumonia requiring an FIU2 of more than 0.35 in the casualty then this sepsis plus shock plus pneumonia plus alcohol abuse. So all these numbers you can add. You can see if I two needed more than 0.35. Okay. So you have got if I two more than 0.35 that is more than 4 liters per minute. So then you have got sepsis and shock, alcohol abuse, all those things are 7.5. So when the patient comes to you, the ARDS patient with diabetes, COVID-19 patient with diabetes, so you will see the risk automatically goes up. So if I come, I will come with diabetes. Okay. So the, 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 here we have seen that the incidence of ARDS when the, the lung injury prediction was uh, high so then they get worse very quickly and they very often have bilateral infiltrates at the time of screening so prevention studies are hard to do they come with so many of these things then you prevent ARDS okay so most of the time we end up managing ARDS are we clear given the lung injury prediction score Anything and everything, we have this patient in bed number 7, okay, patient had a blast of the dynamite, so he has got multiple fractures, he has got possibly smoke inhalation, he uh, uh, had uh, FIO2 was needed high at that time, so this patient, but see, the other things were not there, so patient has recovered quickly. So your lung injury prediction assessment is very, very important. So if we see that it is a pro-inflammatory state with excessive lung water, so treatment of early respiratory failure may prevent the need for intubation. Now this patient on CPAP, if you think that the patient has got extra lung water, you very quickly take it out, which we can do. Today, they are supposed to have started that bed number 8 with extravascular lung water measurement. But it is a very complicated method. So, we cannot teach it in 
this short period of 8-10 days. But that is what we do. If we can do those things early, then we can prevent the extra lung water from accumulating and the patient going from CPAP to high flow to the intubation. But if we don't know, then how much water is collecting? If we are not all the time watching how much fluid is going and coming out, we will not be able to prevent it. And we will only be treating the end result. So, steroids have been used in others. But in COVID, we are not suggesting use of steroids. Okay. Now, uh, in the uh, other patients, they have said that the steroids and mm, correction of lung water, they lead to reduced amount of intubation and ICU admission. But it was a very small trial, so we cannot. So, if, if you fail to do it and the patient develops CRDS, no need to feel guilty. No need to feel guilty. So, Yes, you can. Those are symptomatic. Vitagonis is a symptomatic. Steroid is a treatment modality. That's a treatment modality for trying to treat the cause. So, when the permeability markers and then the repair is going to happen, so the fibrosis will happen. Hmm? So, you see that we can, uh, the, the, the respiratory failure, bilateral infiltrates, so you can do intubation. High flow nasal cannula, I have told you that they may help to keep the lungs printed and uh, for say one hour, two hours, six hours, if the patient improves, then you can hold on. But again, for COVID, we are avoiding such a high flow scenario. So again, we have the high flow, you will say, sir, you are not giving me. I am not giving you for your safety. Hmm. Okay. So, the rationale for the high flow is, it can develop, we can give up to 100, 120 liters nowadays. Hmm. And... Uh, the, in standard nasal cannula, we can give only one to six. Why? Here we humidify it with a heated humidifier. So, whatever goes in is not dry gas and it is more yet comfortable and the, the, it's not drying up the whole tracheobronchial tree. Okay. And in more room air will be entrained because it is going very fast. And so, the oxygen and tension also will be high uh, FiO2 and because so much air is going in and it will take time to come out so just like your humidifiers etc those uh, condenser humidifiers they provide some degree of peak so this may also provide some degree of peak at the end so positive pressure so it may give a sita type thing on continuous positive flow okay so we have this over here with us you can see and settings are there for the patient. Now, we have patients with respiratory failure. Respiratory rate more than 25. Sometimes we go at 30, don't worry. If the accessory muscles are not prominent. PO to 5 to ratio less than 300 while breathing at least 10 liter oxygen by mask for 15 minutes. At least 10 liters. Okay. PSCO2 less than 45. Otherwise, it is carbon dioxide retention. And there is no history of chronic respiratory failure. You know that cardiac origin cardiac failure you should eliminate. Severe neutropenia, that is a severe sepsis. So, sepsis is the cause. Hemodynamic instability in the patient, so you don't know when you are doing what and your PO2. I told you that with hypotension, if there is severe hypotension, then your oxygenation also falls because the lung has got three zones. Hydrostatic pressure, blood is going to the upper zone, middle zone, lower zone. If severe hypotension, 70, 60 BP, then blood is not coming here, so this part is dead space ventilation. Even more hypotension, this part also is dead space ventilation, only this part. So, therefore, hypotension will contribute to low PO to a 5 to ratio. Okay. And if we are using vasopressor, that means that the patient is hypotensive. Hmm? 
and if GCS is less than 12, we know that this patient may not be breathing appropriately. <laughs> so, the man cannot protect his airway. A GCS less than 12, we usually go down to 10. A GCS up to 10, we allow it to go down. Okay. Now, in those cases, hemodynamic instability, severe neutropenia means sepsis is already there, cardiogenic edema, using vasopressors, don't do NIV, hypothesal cannula, etc. Go ahead and it. Logical? Okay. So, we give them high oxygen flow in NIV when we are keeping them. And this is the uh, results. They showed that non-invasive ventilation in those cases had good results and the, but as I told you, you don't have the luxury of those things for this. So survival was high with high flow nasal oxygen but you cannot do that here. So what you may be using <coughs> is, suppose your patient has recovered and is now not weaning. Patient is otherwise showing good respiratory parameters on the graphics, etc., respiratory pattern, but is not recovering. But if the patient has become COVID negative, you can transfer to us and we can do with hypnomasal cannula. Okay, so if the patient is not weaning, I can see your patient uh, on the screen and I can tell, okay, let us test for COVID, COVID is negative. We transfer and put on hypronasal cannula. Okay, so these uh, the patients which are very old, they may not do very well. And uh, if there's COPD, patient may not do well, especially with moderate to severe COPD. Apache, you have not been doing scoring years, so three days are thirty rupees each. Concept double elaborate. Okay, आज तीन हो गया ना? आज four day. आज four day. आज four day. Forty rupees per day. Forty rupees हो गया. CPIS. हाँ. CPIS. Only CPIS. ठीक है. So I will see CPIS. Okay. So. The re-intubation rates are lower when we are using hypnonasal cannula. So, otherwise, cardiac surgery may hypnonasal cannula has been found to be useful and also in post-abdominal surgery patients, weaning from the ventilator. So, the future kya hoga? It's a clinical syndrome and they may have many underlying causes. You saw that LIPS lung injury predicted score. So, we have to identify the sub-phenotypes which are causing the major disease and they, they, they can use the sub-phenotypes. So, biotrauma. I have been telling you we don't use large tidal volume. Hmm. So, stretching of excess stretching of lung units. So, when that curve becomes flat, you have seen the pressure volume loop. Okay. So, there, when it becomes flat, that means I am giving a high pressure and try to stretch the lung, that will cause damage and that will result in cascades which are causing lung inflammation. So all those signals will then go into lung inflammation, release of pro-inflammatory mediators like IL-6. So we are not using currently, but the use of anti-IL-6 agents have come up. Okay, so the direct anti-inflammatory effects of neuromuscular blocking agents and these are improving the ventilator discipline. Patient is trying to breathe. In the morning at 8 o'clock when I was taking the round, that child was fighting the ventilator totally when I came. So we found that there was a ventilator discipline. So we changed the parameters and the patient became, by the time you came, it was a perfect curve, right? So, so you see, the ventilator dyssynchrony, these are very, very important. They cause problems. So, 
the relaxants independently of when you put give the relaxant patient does not fight so the ventilator dyssynchrony goes away but independent of that use of relaxants blocks the acetylcholine receptor and so they uh, help so non pulmonary tissues may they will have action so lung tissue protection hoga ye plus non pulmonary tissues of the body and so multi organ dysfunction syndrome hota hai na so this will re reduce the multi organ system failure so use of relaxants in ards in the initial period will be helpful so when you get the patient don't hesitate to put the patient on relaxant we may keep it for a day or two then heavy sedation and anesthesia because relaxants if you give for a long time what happens relaxants block the receptors na no? muscle receptors now the body in response develops more receptors the block the block has more receptors so you have to give a higher dose you block those also and then they develop more receptors so then your uh, we don't continue to use relaxants for this reason so we use sedation to uh, reduce the need for relaxants and then we go on to sedation and uh, analgesia so that the patient tolerates but the patient will not tolerate if the lung is too bad because the reflex contraction will occur when you are extending the alveoli and the junctions in the tracheobronchial tree they will be sensitive and start contracting so the, you have got future where there are more ards studies now the people talk of vitamin d only recently two or three days back you will find people will talk vitamin c vitamin d anything and everything because everything had a small point where it could work so these are all areas the early treatment with these things can happen but the problem is you say vitamin d vitamin d disappears from the shelf you say vitamin c vitamin c disappears from the shelf without any proven merit okay so we can have the hemodynamically unstable type they have got much much higher mortality rate because the intrathoracic pressure is high venous return is obstructed it is very difficult to maintain blood pressure while giving the requisite by inflation pressure to the lung so both things together as i have said 2 plus 2 in medicine is either 5 6 7 8 9 but never 4 2 plus 2 is never 4 okay then class 2 is the intermediate type and class 3 is the stable type and there is a significant interaction between cumulative fluid balance and which class the patient will go to so we keep our patients as dry as possible so my residents will tell you i am a sick guy i come ha ah, fluid you see every day i talk fluid so i am a very sick guy but you imagine that it is this which has beneficial effect so more fluid beneficial for the unstable type so if good is good for the bad then this is also good for the medium type but there is a problem that when we they have said it was harmful for class 2 and 3 why you will find that people keep taking out fluid and forgetting that the patient becomes hypotensive then they give an inotrope so here it is absolutely important here it would be nice provided you are watching the patient otherwise it can be harmful so restrictive fluid management <laughs> again has another thing if the brain supply the when hypotension occurs the brain supply of oxygen blood supply the rbc getting oxygen they are affected so you may have cognitive disorders so if the patient is bad type 1 go for it the type 2 and 3 you see 4 5 liters positive i don't say anything let it be but most important no hypotension but you give colloids to maintain the intravascular volume as you are taking out the crystalloid the people make the mistake they replace with crystalloid and then because they cannot do it fast enough so therefore the inotrope comes in okay so we have got 
restrictive fluid management is associated with cognitive pain. So you say, sir, restrictive fluid, cognitive pain. It is a subset of patients. Okay? You have understood that the cognitive dysfunction happens? So when you have three, four, five liter positive, so always three, four, five liter, no problem. So when it's not visible, fine. Slightly raised, fine, but not mango hands. Huh? Not mango hands. So we have seen three classes of ARDS with clinical presentations, responses to fluid therapy and prognosis, isn't it? So clinical presentation, respiratory and cardiac failure. And then the others, you have a PO to F5 to ratios getting worse and worse. So response to fluid therapy, this has fantastically significant uh, beneficial effects. Okay. And prognosis, the, this has got a much better prognosis class 3 than class 1 significantly higher mortality rate. So this is using simple clinical variables and you can manage your patients better with this. With this logic do you think you can manage? There are so many things. Uh, that you were saying that one of the most important reasons for having your audience is like patient. Patient's one important thing. So why do they give aspirin? Uh, you may see aspirin in itself, these are only one of the you will have to have full coagulation parameters being done. Yes, so when you do the full coagulation parameter, aspirin is a drug you are giving which effect is going to last long. You would like to treat the patients in which you have got control over the coagulation profile. So when you stop, it should stop soon. That's why you're using this enoxaparin. Enoxaparin, you don't need to check anything. Yes. So the other complications of gastric erosion, because this is a stress situation. So you may, may also add the aspirin, you are adding a problem. So you will use pantoprazole or ranitidine in high dose. Pantoprazole is good. Uh, but uh, if you give pantoprazole for one month, two months, then you may have problems, long-term use of pantoprazole. So the, uh, they are much costlier, so companies would like to put, that is why recently that ranitidine cannot came up. It was on track. Hmm? Yes. Okay. So hyperinflammatory response group will respond better to high peak. Okay. And you will find that the, uh, the specific biomarkers, if you can get IL-6, etc., they will give you the other chance that whether to use anti-inflammatory or not, where you are doing, where you are standing at that point of time. So you have the benefit of IL-6, you have the benefit of procalcitonin, and you are you can always give high P, provided hemodynamically patient is not very bad. So you can have rescue therapies. So one is standard of care and prone position. This is standard of care. What have I said? You are practicing every day. So you have to do that. Whatever happens in this overlapping zone, you will have to have prone positioning, high peep strategies. Hmm? And you may have to use neuromuscular blocking drugs. Okay? Because they themselves have the beneficial effect Besides, you know, the preventing ventilator dyssynchrony, recruitment maneuver. So you will avoid disconnection because each time you disconnect the circuit, circuit the alveoli collapse. You will have to go through your recruitment maneuver again and again. So that is why we are talking to you how to do. If you are going to change the, it is here to you put the ventilator on standby. Clap the tube on the other near the patient and change your it is your calibration, cleaning and calibration. Okay. Now says you don't have to change your humidifier, the condenser humidifier. Okay. So you have got uh, lung protective ventilation. So you may give small volume, the four to six ml per kg with permissive hypercapnia with a pH seven point two and above. Don't go down to the high risks. Hmm? By the time it is coming down to 7.25, give me a call. What do I do? Because then by the time you are talking to me, it has gone down to 7. 
right? So lung protective ventilation you can give. So you have got PO to FI2 ratios, mild ARDS, 250 to 200, you can see over there, but less than 300, then 200 to 150 moderate and below 150, you have got severe ARDS. Okay. So these are the rescue therapies. You are okay with it now? Yes. So prone positioning is the recommended first line. Okay. Recommended first line. And uh, here if it is ERDS PO to if I less than 150, then it may be considered you do one always you do the prone positioning. The recruitment maneuver in very serious cases you may try because recruitment also means high pressure and lung damage. So avoid having to get into a situation by causing the lungs to collapse so, so that you don't have to go in for recruitment. So each time you have to practice clapping and doing your change. So do the PTCO2 calibration repeatedly that you have to do, but do it with the practice in your mind, the recruitment, so that it does not be, it is not needed. You don't allow the alveoli to collapse. So high peep strategy and uh, ECMO, forget it, all these things, forget it. If a patient ECMO has got, it can, it, you, you know, now you tell, sir, ECMO is so good, so we should have it. And so life is precious, but remember, ECMO has the highest amount of aerosol generation in your IC. So driving pressures, you can see if the uh, PF ratio is less than 150 millimeter mercury probability that they can be wind pressure. And ultra protective strategies, that is very low tidal volumes combined with ECMO. Low tidal volume will prevent lung damage, but hypercardia can be there. ECMO will take out the carbon dioxide, but as I said, we don't do. So this will help to reduce the driving pressure because you are not inflating the lungs so much. As I said, more the pressure you are trying to give, more the lung damage is occurring. Okay, I am just showing you these so that you understand and don't feel inadequate. Oh, we don't have ECMO. I have deliberately not get ECMO. ECMO, we need more people. At that point of time, where will I get them? I can buy an expensive equipment, but not use it optimally. Hmm? So, so you and the survival rate in non-COVID patients would be this. The rest 30 will be for your COVID. Okay. Now. You've got spontaneous respiration uh, uh, with increased volume. So the patient is improving. He's having spontaneous respiration. His tidal volume is increasing. So increased transmural pressure, that is when the patient breathes from within the chest and the uh, chest wall, lung and chest wall. That negative pressure generation capacity is now more with the patient. That is called transmural pressure. So if we give increased transmural pressure and early use of neuromuscular blocking drugs, mortality is decreased. So we use esophageal pressure monitoring. Again, it is a very, the, your ventilator downstairs can do esophageal pressure monitoring, which gives us also transmural pressure, but it is a very complicated method. It is expensive also. About uh, 14,000? 48,000. Huh? Last year, 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. 48,000. Hello. Uh, good afternoon. I'm taking a class. Can you? I can call you in ten minutes. I'll call you in ten minutes. Uh, so you have got uh, 
if the minute volume is guided by esophageal pressure, we can differentiate between lung compliance and chest wall compliance. Now, what is this? If you take out the lung and hang it, that is lung compliance. But the lung acts inside the chest wall. Now, he has got a chest wall. That guy behind you has got a chest wall. Thin, thin, thin. Huh? He may have a chest wall thicker, thicker. Somebody has, Sunny will have a chest wall even thicker. <laughs> so, what is happening? Total chest wall compliance is inclusive of lung. Thoracic compliance is lung compliance plus chest wall compliance. So, if the compliance total is low, then driving pressure will be high. So, if I can make, differentiate which is the lung compliance, which is the chest compliance, then I will not treat a low compliance which is due to thoracic compliance. I will treat only the lung compliance. If the lung compliance is improving, but the guy has got a thicker chest wall, so more in him than you. So, then I don't need to treat that. So, during that, it will help. So, in that case, I mean, if we get such a patient, I will ask the technician to do it and then he will show you and then we will do the test. But, you know, if I complicate you, it is very, it is not easy to interpret also, conceptually, but it can be done. We will do it for patients who are expected to benefit. Okay? So, it is not that you don't, I have given you the ventilator in which it can be done. We have the catheter which we will be using. My technician will be connecting it. And then I will tell you how you are doing, what you are doing. Okay, but understand that 14,000 just XIE, that is the cost price only. <laughs> Hospital rate. It is not very uh, easy to use it when uh, you may not have the opportunity to use it. Because imagine every batch I have to then, you know, and eight bar Vikhaki will forget. You have to sit the whole day and measure these different things. Each of you have to become familiar, otherwise uh, in your duty it doesn't come, you knew it very well, in his duty it comes, he didn't uh, remember it well. It is total wastage. You understand why? So, we have got resource constrained and resource set <laughs> rich settings, we can't do much and predicting where ARDS, then today everywhere ARDS has become common whenever they are coming on this so, infection and trauma are the leading clinical insults. That patient was trauma and very often severe sepsis leads to ARDS. So, these are the common and ARDS could be prevalent in high income countries where you have got, everybody is going on mechanical ventilation. In our place, how many go on ventilation? So, you will say ARDS number is less. So, uh, the mechanical ventilation, where it is available and more prevalent, you will get more ARDS. Some other young patient will die before coming to ARDS. We will not even know, not put on ventilator. So, so resource constrained and, constrained and resource rich, then middle income countries, then some will go to the corporate and get everything, the others will come to other government hospitals where they will get nothing. Okay, they come here also, if they are rich, they can purchase that 14,000, the poor cannot purchase. So then MHIs can purchase. You understand the difference? BPLKDI will need a permission that this ex extra expensive thing, was it absolutely needed? When is the time to make that judgment? So the administrator will push a pen only. Okay. So access to care may be extremely valuable. So that is why you see, I am not talking so much about your the lung compliance code testing. So, if the ARDS is so common and lethal, lethal in resource constraint settings, why is data so sparse? They don't come to you in time also. And all critical care research is hamstrung by these things. We don't, we, we can't have a patient according to the criteria we would wish. Again, they are confined to ICUs of which there are very few in poorer settings. That means all the other patients died without care. And the, in the intensive care over multiple nations, they, they did it over a large part in claiming that they were doing it over uh, uh, 
poorer settings, but only 1.4% of all patients were from the African continent where poverty is there. So therefore, what is the value of that study? Hmm? So you have got over nations, but the nations, the, the, when you talk of Africa, only 1.4% of the patients who needed that care got it. Then, again, Berlin definition, that's why I told you from the beginning, that don't go only by the definition. You understand that a lower to 5 to ratio is a sicker patient. So, uh, the, uh, the, the current definition requires diagnostic and treatment capabilities that are almost universally absent. So, if you can't define, how do you submit it to research? So, ABG. <laughs> using a PO to 5 to ratio and a chest x-ray. So, in go to the district hub, what will you get? You will have ICU in Tura, ICU in Nongpo, and till a few days ago, ICU in civil hospital, go to ICU in Ganesdas. So, you will have an ICU, but you may not have these. Even a portable chest x-ray, the patient will have to be taken for x-ray, and is on ventilator, so you cannot take for x-ray and you don't bring the x-ray. You have got over here an x-ray that is brought in and x-ray is taken. So we can do. So these are the problems that your definition of ARDS that you cannot define it simply because it needs cell. So people came up with the SAO2 FiO2 ratio. You have seen SAO2, it's, again the logic is there, saturation is also falling. They are not exactly parallel, but they have some degree of matching. So, nowadays instead of x-ray, we can do lung ultrasound. And for if, if you have the lung ultrasound and you are not paying for every ultrasound being done by the salary radiologist, then it doesn't cost more per investigation. And ultrasound can be used to assess the PEEP induced changes. So, it can tell you the lung is being recruited nicely, ultrasound. So, those of you who can do ultrasound will be able to do it, you have an ultrasound there. Even ask uh, Dr. Sania Pratak, they will show you how to do. Okay, lung ultrasound. It's not easy but to make a judgment, but you can do. Okay, Sani ko request karna. So, combining the lung with the bedside, Cardiac ultrasound can be helpful in differentiating because cardiac ultrasound tells you there is no cardiac failure. Lung ultrasound tells you there is recruitment or lack of recruitment and collapse. So it will differentiate DRDS from cardiogenic pulmonary edema and assess the right ventricular function. Okay. So ultrasound advantage is fast learning curve. So we say after better the whole. Low cost, I told you, requiring only basic ultrasound technology, affordable, you can have a handheld, etc. You have all the good things. Okay, so does it matter that ARDS is rarely recognized or recognized late? If you could recognize it early with an ultrasound, if you could recognize it early with a PO to FI2 ratio. If you could recognize it early with bilateral pulmonary infiltrates, if you could recognize it early with an IL-6 rays, then it will allow implementation of interventions that is low tidal volume, high PEEP, PEEP A5 to ratio, fluid management, dehydrating the patient, both for prevention and supporting care. So, importance of having a high index of suspicion and then recognition allows the risk into the risk and benefits of applying intervention. What are they? Low tidal volume, permissive hypercapnia, acidosis versus hypercapnia versus arrhythmia versus oxygenation, all these things. So, when you keep doing small, small changes, then research can happen. So, if you can recognize only then you will start treatment early. So, then you will know early treatment of ARDS and these are the variables that help. So, but pruning 
और फॉर सीवियर रियाडियस यू डोंट नीड टेक्नोलॉजी ठीक है सो यू सीन द मोमेंट यू केम सर हैज गॉट दिस जैसा गांव का आदमी आके हमारा भैसा इतना दूध देता है लाइक आई टेल यू चलो क्रोन करो चलो क्रोन करो सो इट्स प्रॉब्लम इज ओनली द एबिलिटी टू परफॉर्म इट सेफली विद द फ्यू स्टाफ बट दिस इज ऑल बुलशिट दे क्लेम दीस थिंग्स you do and you see you can do it now so it's important it is fantastic it is beautiful do it okay and you can then allow research into ards trigger like access to it hmm? and lung injury pathways and so in various different contexts and populations it will be different and recognition of ards could contribute to improvements in all aspects of healthcare because if you recognize it late then more it demand more long term ventilation more uh, multi organ dysfunction will occur because of the prolonged period of ventilation with poor venous return so some for some time kidney will fail for some time heart will fail for some time liver will fail because of the pulp congestion so then ultimately you overcome all this and the lung had inflammation then fibrosis so when the patient will become awake they will give this video picture and uh, then everybody clapping the survive covid survivor going out but he will never stand and walk that they are not telling you only pachia so you want a guy who will live and walk and run and do the previous things he did and that is where the importance of early recognition and early treatment and attention to detail is important okay so this is mane like a patient with ards caused by peritonitis so now peritonitis has occurred and you will have to do safe surgery so if adequate antibiotics are given in addition to lung protective ventilation so so many things are there so just saying that i will do this ventilation just doing air in the prone position and waiting for the lung to get bad be proactive don't allow fluid accumulation don't allow hypovolemia treat every day as alertly as early as possible this requires this requires treating and caring intensively that is intensive care not the machine caring intensively okay so i have told you reasonable estimates of po2 fio2 ratio from spo2 fio2 ratio have been derived this was i think a tanzania study uh, and a rwandan study rwanda and tanzania kitna duri mein hai two studies are there africa and rwanda sab to africa mein sabhi africa both are two different two country. countries no how near are they okay let's okay forget it so pulmonary oximetry a pulse oximetry could realistically replace oxygen assessment by blood gas Imagine the guy working in Rwanda. He thinks of this idea and works. They work go parallel. <coughs> so you just change the quantum, but the trend remains the same. So, so variety of FiO2 estimates and saturation estimates you can do. So this is the Kigali modification of the Berlin definition because Berlin definition fails because they will just need it. So the pulse oximeter you can still get. Hmm? You can get for two thousand rupees now, one thousand five hundred rupees. Will mm -hmm. get. So it can change the Berlin definition and allow validation of this. So it should be uh, investigated as alternative to oxygen tension in the blood. So there may be better outcomes using this oxygen data at twenty four hours in ERDS diagnosis. So. ERDS in resource constrained constrained they are common pulse oximetry ultrasound outcomes 50% mortality in resource rich with everything still it is 35 to 50% but this would definitely with pulse oximetry and ultrasound you would have a better result hmm? so conservative fluid management is feasible attention to detail i told you just the the vein is gone three to four liters if a slightly more um, uh, 5 to 7 liters mango 12 to 15 liters 
So you can have conservative fluid management, you can give low tidal volume ventilation, you can give blockade, neuromuscular blockade in severe ARDS, you can give proning and you can treat the underlying cause. Here in resource rich, again conservative fluid management, we can do everything here provided patient can afford it. Low tidal volume ventilation, PEEP based on esophageal pressure monitoring as I told you. Huh? Neuromuscular blockade, proning, ECMO, treatment of underlying cause. So, we have to look at the risk benefit balance of interventions, cost benefit balance of interventions, and new supportive interventions, targeting molecular pathways of ARDS. So, these are important. So, ARDS has already been existing worldwide. It has now been brought home to you in huge numbers with COVID. So, you have to see that education on how to prevent and manage this syndrome. That is what I was talking to you. Huh? So, we have to research to expand the treatment strategies. Any questions? Where is this photo? Dantlin Falls here, see? As you go to Dantlin, just before that on the right side, there is a river type and there are some rocks in which the water goes like this. If you fall inside, you are gone. Yes, questions. So, management of ARDS is having the same pitfalls as this. Fast movements, fast flowing. Home positioning. So, for how long should... 12 to 14 hours. 12 to 16 hours. Abdomen must be free. Remember, feel the pelvis, your own pelvis. You have to feel your pain, otherwise you will put it here. All of us put it in the wrong place. We don't know where our pelvis is. Hmm? And sternum. Okay, abdomen free, pass your hand under the abdomen. So two pillows, two pillows, abdomen free. Because the fatter the patient, three pillows, more people to lift. But do it. And if 12 14 hours patient will stay, then we do not do Then, good question. So, apart from uh, using, right now we are using anosoparin only. Yes, you use anosoparin, no problem. <laughs> apart from that, sir, like since. Uh, uh, Keep it simple, is, don't go for complicated things, apixaban, etc. Hey, sir, this is what you are just showing that like, this is severe. Uh, like the probability of having thrombosis and this uh, patient is COVID-19. So we are using this apart from that, how else can we decrease the inflammation, sir? You can, inflammation or coagulation? Uh, uh, coagulation also be giving an observation. You, you, no, 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 you, no, no, no. you do repeat it uh, initially, you do 4 hourly, then you make it uh, 8 hourly, then you make it 12 hourly, then you make it once daily. But you have to follow the coagulation profile. Yes, sir. Basically, uh, we have the uh, capability of doing IL-6 here. But no, yeah, no, no. So, if you want to do it, no, 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 no. Yeah, you, what you don't have, you don't have. That's why you can't use anti-inflammatory agents uh, blindly. It's only for a window period. So, whether to use, how much to use, those are complicated things. Don't worry about it. Then I wouldn't have to spend my life doing critical care. <laughs> <laughs> 2000, mm, 1990, no, 1989, uh, October, I started clinical care work. Before that, I did as a training, I was, uh, when I was doing my training. But as a consultant, I've been doing only from that time. Otherwise, from 1988, I am doing this. <laughs> so, as you know, are we using anti inflammatory? We are not using anti inflammatory? No, we are not using anti inflammatory for ARDS. We are not using anti-inflammatory ARDS. The doses are not stabilized. Again, you see the dose will be when the upstroke of the inflammation and peak of the inflammation, so which phase, how much. So these are all trying to hit. You have got a guy going round and round and you are trying to the eyes blindfolded to hit that guy going around. Steroids no. General consensus at present is no. So this is the pathology you will treat. So you have to send culture so that secondary infection is happening or not. 
You have to send blood, paxitoneal band forms, uh, dole bodies, vacuoles. You have to see the TLC. You have to see the lymphocytes. If the lymphocytes are falling, then the neutrophil lymphocyte ratio is going to become more. Okay. This one, apart from the liver strategy and this uh, fluid management, any other service, anti viral or HSQ, other hospitals have implemented? See, a, 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 we are doctors. We are doctors, okay? So, what happens? All of us have got different backgrounds. How many of us actually follow logic? How many of us follow rationale? Antibiotic prescription. In your own hospital, patients come and are given four major antibiotics the day one. And you see our patients, 68 days on ventilator and not getting antibiotics. No fever, no TLC, no nothing. So, you understand, I cannot argue for those who don't follow logic. So, let us leave it at that. It's like when I tell you polyven use as a colloid, I can't argue with people who will say no. But I have said logic, our people have been instructed and they have done for a long period coalition profile, no problem. Four units, five units, no problem. If the patient already has an existing coagulopathy, why will I try to increase it even if there is a remote chance? But if the patient has no other option, I will still give it because it actually we are not seeing anything, but we don't use it as the option. But if there's nothing, somebody will say, you can't use it, you see, it is banned. And if where is your diarrhea? Who will buy it? So the patient dies anyway, today that patient with the blood pressure, the, because 1.7 is your albumin, hemoglobin is 4.1, where will be the best viscosity of the blood, where will be the resistance for the BP to come up? So what will you give? What do I know in here? Colloid. <laughs> <laughs> Colloid. So, we have to understand if the logic is sitting rationally, it can be given in our resource constraint. I am not telling we are there poor. We have lots of things, but using them rationally, logically, when we get, we are giving everything. It's not that we are not giving antibodies because we don't, they can't afford it. We are not giving antibodies because they don't need. And high end, because they are not available. Because this is a market driven economy. So, if I don't prescribe every day those high-end antibiotics, they will not be available in the pharmacy. If I ask for it on the net, it will come after two days. So, my patient is today. In medicine, time is like... Again, good question. But understand, logic has... You have to feel comfortable. Medicine is not an ass. Law is not an ass. They say that the law is an ass. Law is not an ass. We are the asses. We make an ass of the law deliberately. We make an ass of medicine deliberately. A small study somewhere telling a small percentage of patients improve, we treat it like the holy grail because it suits us. It suits us. Hydroxychloroquine. Where is the strength of the data? Yes, it may work on the pneumocytes, it may work on the uh, uh, ACE2 uh, uh, lung pneumocytes, but how much? Okay, side by side, if the patient does not have, it's otherwise healthy patient, okay, you are using it maybe. Fine, we have no issues with that. But if the patient has an arrhythmia, if the patient has the hypertension, are you going to use that in the presence of acidosis? Are you going to use it? So our next of management in case of COVID-19 is like to manage the ARDS. And all, no, 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 nothing specific, only symptomatic. symptomatic. Now, be very clear, there is no magic bullet today. Plasma therapy, where is the standardization? The patient was sick, was given. Patient might have improved anyway. Patient might have improved anyway. So many patients get well. I say patients survive in spite of us, not because of us. Hmm. The patient I think is not going to get well. But the neurologically it appears the brain is gone, everything. And then we find one day gradually patient wakes up. I didn't mind to transfer a doctor. That means there was some separation somewhere. Hmm. So 
you have to understand that these things happen and people will press has got hold of something to write. Press is not medicine. Press is not medicine. Okay? And pharmaceutical companies are out to make a killing. They will lie through their teeth. They will swear falsehood, keeping their hand on the head of their children. Don't believe that. Okay. Follow their logic. Is there a rationale? If the hypothesis is there, how strong is the hypothesis? How strong is the test? Did at least a reasonable number of patients recover from this when treated consecutively? Now you will say, sir, 500 patients worldwide recovered. Of them, maybe 480 would have recovered anyway. 20 may have recovered because of that. What does it prove to you? Okay, so don't feel, I have to have a magic bullet. That is where you will feel sad. That you are, uh, you are hamstrung, you are not hamstrung. Mortality rate is high. But you can give the patient the best shot where you make them prone, give them uh, uh, permissive hypercapnia, give them, uh, watch the pH, watch the tidal volume, watch the air repression, maintain the peak, pre prevent over uh, volemia, Ensure that they just uh, uh, slight uh, over fluid balance, nothing more. Is the albumin okay? Or is the uh, volumen okay? Use more volumen, use the albumin to make up for the rest. You have given four volumen, five volumen, make up with albumin. If the albumin is very low, give albumin. But not albumin to maintain the collateral pressure. I have a small question for you. If you can answer, you get 20 rupees. You give so much colloids. Ultimately, colloid will go into the tissue. Then, next day, Dr. Bhattacharya comes and gives, give three more colloids. Volume. Tissue will go Next day, I come again, three more volume. It should go direct fluid over there and expand and expand and expand. Dr. Bhattacharya is a very cool part. He wrote both the volume and though it is crossing the blood vent blood vessel wall and going into the tissue and now it is drawing fluid why the tissue will come down if you can tell rate goes up 40 rupees 50 rupees will like intravascular jab the nikal gaya it has gone into the tissue now it can only some of it will come back which takes time the, uh, whatever they, they will have some degree of movement, but mostly will go out. So then what happens? So let's see that good day, tissue cell lymphatics. <laughs> My money is safe. <laughs> okay. Any other questions, sir? One thing. Yes, sir. Investigations. Means what are the means protocol and Pro what to, are this, this is and when a, a guy who is being sent into fight will ask. <laughs> so, <laughs> very good question, very good question. You will check hemoglobin because they will, the sepsis at these different conditions, they will fall. Platelets, you will do at least twice weekly. Twice weekly. Twice weekly. If you get uh, a platelet count falling, immediately replay, uh, re repeat the platelet count urgent. Why? Very often the platelets seem to adhere to the walls of the vial of the container that you are sending. So, that does not come in the count and you have got an artificially lowered platelet count. If all other INR etc are fine, then don't panic. Send a very quick sample and ask for the report within one to two hours. So then if that is okay, fine. Up to 80, 90,000 platelets is fine, unless you are doing a procedure. Okay. So, and then you will ask for TLC. You will look, that's why on the round, I am making you see what I am doing. Okay, so IL-6 will give you, where do you stand, IL-6 procal. So, you will have a good idea what is happening. Your scoring systems have to be there, Apache, because it tells all the systemic investigations that are there. And so, damn, yeah, oh, everything is taken care of in that. You have got CPIS score, so your pulmonary infection scoring is done. GCS is the patient away. Hmm? Because when intrathoracic pressure rises, venous congestion occurs, brain may congestion, 
again consciousness may drop again your peep may drop venous return will improve and the patient may become awake hmm? so you will be able to think more on these lines huh? so anything and everything has an effect hmm? so what are the investigations are you talking in x ray you will ask for okay you will ask for an x ray don't hesitate to ask for an x ray every day the patient is on ventilator forget the exposure why because the uh, one ct scan how many x ray exposures yaan so my friend is going in the wind patient mar jayega bina x ray mein tu to uska aage ka kya soch raha hai and you don't hesitate to ask for a ct so a patient on ventilator do it because you will know where is your tube tip you will know whether infiltrations are occurring you will know whether pleural effusion is occurring you will know whether you have to put in a chest drain or not okay so urine output you will watch very closely whether it's falling or not then try to find the reason hypertension is it urine output falling because uh, you didn't give water is it because multi organ damage may it is part of that the hemodiesis <coughs> okay so all these things what are the investigation in the tcdc etc earlier coagulation profile and the albumin you will be looking for following occasionally at least twice a week or thrice a week and try to keep it 2 and above 2.2 2.5 try hmm? so then mera ho gaya electrolytes blood test karoge electrolyte mil jayega theek hai so lab mein bhi they do it in the same family of machine so don't think that aapko bhejne mein kuch hua the by the and the ceiling in which you collect the flush out the heparin as far as possible we are trying to get you those pre heparinized syringes but the more the heparin in your syringe the heparin is very low ph so you get low ph potassium very high think of hemolysis check glucose regularly system ko bolna then check it for regularly feed you will give by infusion and so during that infusion period your insulin infusion should also be done go to bed number 6 which has been moved to now 7 8 9 10 11 yeah. 11 so you go to 11 and see usko we were finding very high sugars so you see logically we are not playing games lantus we started standard gave soluble insulin high sugar increase lantus 2 mg continue with the same sugar perfect huh? but what do people do so they are all crooks हम उसमें लैंटर्स भी देंगे मिक्स स्टार्ट भी देंगे और एक खाना के साथ एक सर्विल इंसुलिन भी देंगे सो दैट यू कैन नॉट मेक आउट व्हाट इज हैपनिंग टू यू यू कैन नॉट मेक आउट व्हाट इज हैपनिंग टू यू अगर वो हो गया तो मेरे पास विजिट करने कौन आएगा देन आई विल चेंज द इंसुलिन नेक्स्ट टाइम इस टाइम आई विल गेट मनी एंड यू हैव यू फाइल्स आर गोइंग टू बी थ्रोन अवे हमारा नरेंद्र को पूछना उसका फादर तो सो मेनी थिंग्स आर गोइंग ऑन खिचड़ी and pinch our our ice here which didn't ho gaya sab band kar diya usko give it try then that for me chal raha hai perfect who was sitting in the front of this because that is how the money is okay so follow the standard things don't hesitate to ask me questions i'm very happy you have asked questions and this is how you will manage look at the eyes when you do prone look at the lips that got damaged or not look at the ali nose ali nose eye they got damaged or not shoulders etc this look at na ho jaye but remember the in the covid cardiac patient shoulder dislocation theek ho jayega bache to pehle but is that doesn't mean you going to look at the shoulders ये दोनों को देख के डर लग रहा है पता चलेगा इनका हाथ से गिर के हो जाएगा आप हाथ से पटक के ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सर